Have you ever wondered how a single mega project could change the face of an entire continent? In today's video, we'll delve into the North American Water and Power Alliance, or NAWAPA, a groundbreaking initiative proposed in the early 1960s that aimed to tackle one of America's most pressing dilemmas, chronic water shortages in the West. With an astonishing estimated cost of $1 trillion, this ambitious project sought to revolutionize water management by linking the vast water resources of Canada and Alaska to the arid regions of the United States and Northern Mexico. What if I told you that this project had the potential to reshape landscapes, boost economies, and transform lives? Who was the visionary behind this colossal plan? Enter Ralph M. Parsons, a pioneering engineer who recognized the untapped potential of our continent's water resources. As we explore this captivating story, we'll uncover the economic and social impacts Nawapa could have had, the challenges it faced, and what its legacy means for us today. Join us as we navigate through the ambitious yet controversial journey of Nawapa and its implications for the future of water management in North America. Understanding the Water Problem To grasp the significance of Nawapa, one must first understand the context in which it was conceived. The United States had just emerged from World War II, a period that marked the beginning of significant demographic and economic changes. The post-war era was characterized by a remarkable baby boom, as families were expanded and population surged. Between 1946 and 1964, approximately 76 million babies were born, a staggering increase that signaled a new chapter of growth and prosperity for the nation. Simultaneously, industrial output in the U.S. nearly doubled. Factories that had once produced tanks and fighter planes during the war swiftly pivoted to manufacturing cars, household products, and consumer goods. This economic boom led to an unprecedented increase in demand for water. By 1950, the United States was withdrawing around 180 billion gallons of water from its rivers, lakes, and aquifers each day. By 1960, this number had risen to an alarming 270 billion gallons. Nowhere was the impact of this demand more apparent than in the arid landscapes of California, Nevada, Arizona, and western Texas, where water scarcity was becoming an acute crisis. The West, characterized by its hot and dry climate, received little rainfall typically less than 10 to 15 inches per year. The heat caused water to evaporate quickly, making it challenging to keep reservoirs full. With a rapidly growing population in these regions, the need for easily accessible water became a pressing concern, not just for the people of the United States, but also for northern Mexico, which faced similar challenges. As the population continued to rise, the question loomed larger. How could the nation sustain its growth and productivity without sufficient water resources? Who was the mastermind behind this colossal project? Enter Ralph M. Parsons, a pioneering engineer who recognized the continent's vast untapped water resources in Canada and Alaska. Parsons envisioned redirecting rivers and rainfall to the arid regions of the U.S. and northern Mexico. But how would this ambitious plan come to life? Amidst this brewing crisis stood Ralph M. Parsons, a visionary engineer and entrepreneur. Having founded his engineering firm in 1944, Parsons built a reputation as the go-to expert for large-scale projects. His company had successfully designed and engineered various projects, including Air Force rocket engine test stands and Turkey's first oil refinery. By the early 1950s, Parsons had established critical connections with government officials and influential figures, positioning himself to propose solutions to the nation's pressing problems. 
Parsons recognized that the solution to America's water crisis would require something extraordinary. While the U.S. faced a water shortage, he understood that the continent actually possessed vast water resources, particularly in the northwest regions of Canada and Alaska. However, most of this water flowed into the ocean, far from where it was needed most. Thus, an audacious idea was born redirect the rainfall and rivers from these northern regions into the heart of the United States and down into northern Mexico. This ambitious proposal took shape as the North American Water and Power Alliance, or NAWAPA. The vision was grand. The plan involved constructing a network of dams, reservoirs, canals, and tunnels that would transport water over natural topographical barriers ensuring that it reached the areas of greatest need. The design of Nawapa was nothing short of a monumental feat of engineering. The project would commence near the headwaters of the Yukon River, where dams would be built to block the river's natural flow into the Bering Sea. This would create a massive reservoir capable of holding vast amounts of water. From there, a complex network of canals, tunnels, and pumping stations would be established, allowing water to be lifted and redirected southward. The plan envisioned additional reservoirs along the Laird and Peace Rivers in British Columbia. These reservoirs would be built at high elevations, utilizing gravity to facilitate the flow of water down into the lower regions, thereby reducing the need for extensive pumping. The high elevation of these reservoirs would also allow for the generation of hydroelectric power, which would supply the necessary energy to pump water uphill in the later process. Once the water flowed southward, engineers planned to utilize the natural dip of the Rocky Mountain Trench as a central storage hub. This trench would become a massive reservoir guiding the diverted water across Montana and central Idaho. The hydroelectric power generated from the newly constructed dams would provide the energy needed for the pumping stations, enabling the water to be lifted via a giant pump to the Sawtooth Reservoir in southwestern Montana. From there, the water would flow by gravity through western sections of the system, passing through tunnels in the Sawtooth Mountains and then southward along the borders of Utah and Nevada. At this juncture, the water would split into two branches, one heading east toward Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado, and the other flowing southwest into Nevada, California, and northwestern Mexico. To ensure that Canada reaped the benefits of this vast undertaking, some water would be diverted from the Peace River, flowing eastward toward the Great Lakes Basin, once added to Lake Superior, this water could be transported through existing and newly constructed canals to other Great Lakes. This aspect of the project was particularly appealing to Canada, as the Great Lakes were sensitive to seasonal variations in water volume, and declining levels had begun to affect shipping and navigation. What if Nawapa could have transformed economies across North America? The Nawapa project held potential for transformative economic and social impacts across the continent. For the United States, the promise of nearly 78 million acre feet of water annually was a game changer. This influx of water would allow for the expansion of irrigatable land by over 60,000 square miles, significantly boosting agricultural production. The project was estimated to generate approximately 3.88 gigawatts of power, enough to power over 3 million modern homes through hydroelectric generation. Moreover, Parsons believed that Nawapa would substantially raise the living standards for millions of people. The construction of the projects were projected to create around 4 million new jobs, both directly and indirectly. With the economy riding a wave of post-war optimism, many saw Nawapa as a pathway to sustained growth and prosperity. However, the economic benefits were not limited to the United States. Canada stood to gain from improved water levels in the Great Lakes, which would enhance navigation and shipping, 
Additionally, Mexico would gain access to vital irrigation for its agricultural lands, potentially tripling its irrigatable land. The project promised to deliver not only water, but also 2 gigawatts of power with 1.2 gigawatts generated within Mexico itself. Despite the promise of Nawapa, the project faced significant challenges. The original cost estimates calculated by the Parsons Company placed the project at approximately 100 billion US dollars over a 30-year construction timeline, equivalent to over a trillion dollars in today's economy. For context, this staggering amount was more than double the cost of President Eisenhower's interstate highway system, which connected the nation by road. The financing of a project of this scale was inherently complex. The cost would need to be shared among the three nations involved, with the United States likely footing the majority of the bill. The lengthy construction timeline, combined with the sheer magnitude of the investment, created a recipe for potential disaster. If one nation encountered financial difficulties and withdrew support, it could lead to a diplomatic nightmare. Moreover, questions arose about whether the nations involved would even see a return on their investments. Parsons' estimates suggested that the 100 billion US dollar cost would be recouped within 50 years through water and energy sales. However, Many skeptics raised concerns about the feasibility of such projections, given the numerous uncertainties associated with a project of this magnitude. In addition to financial challenges, logistical issues loomed large. The complexities of constructing dams, tunnels, and canals across varied terrains of over 4,000 kilometers presented significant engineering obstacles. The sheer scale of the project raised questions about its viability, and many experts expressed doubts about whether it could be completed as envisioned. As the 1970s approached, the political and social landscape of the United States began to shift. A growing awareness of environmental issues marked the rise of American environmentalism, a movement that fundamentally challenged the feasibility and desirability of projects like Nawapa. Environmentalists raised alarms about the ecological impact of diverting rivers and flooding vast areas, the potential harms to fish migration, local habitats, and the overall health of aquatic ecosystems became central to the debate. Critics argued that flooding large areas to create reservoirs would wipe out wildernesses, forests, and wetlands, destroying natural habitats and endangering local wildlife. Concerns also emerged regarding the impact on indigenous populations in Canada, many of whom relied on land and waterways for their livelihood. As environmental awareness grew, the promise of Nawapa was increasingly viewed through a lens of ecological preservation. Despite the valid concerns raised by environmentalists, the primary reason for the project's decline ultimately stemmed from its staggering cost. As public sentiment began to shift, support for Nawapa waned. The optimism that had surrounded the project started to dissipate, and influential politicians who had once championed it found themselves facing mounting opposition. In the wake of growing environmental activism, the 1970s marked a turning point for Nawapa. While some politicians and advocates continued to support the project, the momentum had shifted, the complexities of financing the potential for ecological harm and the logistical challenges loomed larger than ever. By the end of the decade, the dream of Nawapa had largely faded. The combination of high costs, environmental opposition, and shifting political priorities led to its decline. The project once seen as a potential solution to America's water crisis became a symbol of the challenges associated with large-scale infrastructure initiatives. What remains of Nawapa today? Today, echoes of Nawapa linger in discussions about water management and environmental sustainability. While the mega project was never realized, its vision continues to inspire conversations about innovative solutions to water scarcity and resource management.
Some advocates still champion the idea, arguing that a modernized version of Nuwapa could address contemporary water crises. As climate change continues to impact weather patterns and water availability across North America, the questions raised by Nuwapa are more relevant than ever. How can nations balance the need for water resources with the imperative of ecological preservation? What innovative solutions can be devised to ensure a sustainable future for agriculture, industry, and communities facing water scarcity? While the original version of Nuwapa may not have come to fruition, its legacy lives on in the ongoing pursuit of innovative strategies to manage water resources. The lessons learned from the ambitious project can serve as a reminder of the complexities involved in addressing the critical issues of water scarcity and sustainability. The North America Water and Power Alliance remains a fascinating chapter in the history of engineering and environmentalism. It represents the intersection of ambition, innovation, and the pressing need for sustainable solutions. As societies grapple with the challenges of water management in an ever-changing world, the spirit of Nawapa continues to inspire discussions about the future of water resources in North America. The question remains, would Nawapa have been a monumental success or a catastrophic failure? Only time will tell, but the conversation it sparked is one that endures. As of now, the North American Water and Power Alliance Nawapa project has not been realized and remains a concept rather than an active endeavor. The project was shelved primarily due to financial, logistical, and environmental concerns that arose during the 1970s. However, discussions about water management and resource allocation continue, especially as regions in the United States and Mexico face increasing water scarcity due to climate change population growth, and agricultural demand. In recent years, there has been a renewed interest in large-scale water infrastructure projects, though not specifically Nawapa. Various initiatives and proposals have emerged that focus on sustainable water management, conservation, and innovative technologies to address water shortages. Additionally, Concerns about environmental impacts have led to a more cautious approach to any large-scale water diversion projects to ensure ecological integrity and community rights are respected. While the WAPA itself is not active, the underlying issues it sought to address remain relevant, and discussions about potential solutions continue to evolve in the context of modern environmental and social challenges.